Hi, I'm Lori and welcome to Lori B Yoga. Today's class I've titled the Goldilocks Flow and that's because I think it's the perfect combination of challenge mixed with gentle movements, uh, full body stretches and twists. So learn to meet any of the challenges that come up with a smile and know that a challenge might be that you have to give a lot of physical effort to get through it. And then a challenge might also be just knowing when to take it easy on yourself. Okay, so we will meet on the mat in Shavasana, but first grab any props that you think you might need. So a block, a blanket, a strap, and we'll meet on the mat in Shavasana. Okay, and so we're going to lie in Shavasana just to get still before we begin. Quiet the mind. Start your pranayama breath practice of inhales and exhales pull through the nose. And creating a habit of that breath practice throughout each pose throughout the class. Take one more inhale. And exhale it out. And then slowly start to bend the knees and walk the feet in, drawing the thighs into the belly. And then straighten the legs so that the ankles are over the hips. Flex the ankles, engaging the legs. And we'll take the left leg down right above the mat. So the ankle is going to hover above the mat. Keep both legs engaged, keep the ankles flexed, and think that you're you're pointing through the heels. Draw the navel into the spine and switch legs. Left leg up, right leg down. Draw through the heels and engage your core. And then switch. And then switch. And then right leg meets the left. And then we're reaching the arms up overhead so that the thumbs face the floor. But again, the thumbs are just going to hover over the mat or over the floor. And then lower the left leg. And let the ankle hover just a little bit above the mat. Drawing through both heels and switch legs. And switch legs. Last one, switch. And then draw your thighs in towards your belly. Wrap your arms around your shins. And we'll roll up all the way through to a tabletop. So then once in tabletop, you want your wrist directly underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. So we're just um, going to draw the right hip towards the right shoulder, stretching through the left side, really making a nice curve, crunching it up on the right side. And then over to the left, drawing the thigh and the shoulder towards one another and stretching through the right side. One more time, each side, right hip to right shoulder, and then left, left hip to left shoulder. And then back to center. We're going to come into our supported side plank. Take your left shin at an angle so that your left foot is at the edge of your mat. Step the right foot behind your right, or your right foot behind your left. Open up the body and reach the right arm up. Now firmly press into that right foot, lift the hips, rotate the right arm, and then reach the right arm over the ear. So you want to feel the stretch from the right fingertips down the arm, through the rib cage, through the hip, and down the leg. And then back up to center. Right hand, right knee down. Then take the right shin to an angle, right foot at the edge of the mat. Left foot steps behind it. Open the body up, reach the left arm up. Now press into your left foot, rotate the left arm, and reach the left arm over the ear. 
as you reach through the left fingertips and you press through the left foot, you'll feel the stretch on the entire left side of the body. And then back up and left hand, left knee to the mat. Curl the toes under and we'll lift the knees. We'll hover for a minute, draw a little forward, a little back, a little forward, a little back, a little forward, a little back, a little forward, and up and back for downward facing dog. So our first down dog, take the feet really wide, maybe as wide as the mat, maybe even a little bit more, and lock the hands in just a little bit to make this a, a very comfortable down dog and feel free to fidget and move and do what feels good in this first really big stretch. And bring the feet closer together and we'll slowly walk the feet towards the hands. Lengthen through the spine and exhale, fold in. And then just dangle a little bit. And take an inhale and exhale. And then we'll slowly roll all the way up to a standing. Arms at your sides. Take an inhale, reach the arms up, gaze between the palms. Exhale, fold in. Exhale, look forward to lengthen. Exhale, step the feet back, set up your plank, take an inhale. Exhale, lower all the way down to your belly. We'll set up the cobra, lifting, pressing into the palms. Exhale, lower down, curl the toes, lift back up into plank, and draw back downward facing dog. Lift the right leg, and then step the right foot to your right thumb. Lower the right shin, come to the top of your left foot, plant your right left hand in front of your right foot, and open up to the right for a twist. One more inhale. Exhale, right hand down. Curl left toes under, lift the left knee, and the right leg reaches back. Lift the left leg up, and set the left foot to your left thumb. Lower the right shin, Come to the top of the right foot. Plant the right hand. Left arm reaches up for a twist. One more inhale. Exhale, left hand down. Curl the right toes under. This time, step the right foot next to the left. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, bend the knees. Sweep the arms for Utkatasana chair pose. So the weight is now in the heels, toes are light, and the tailbone is reaching down. Biceps are next to the ears. One more inhale, and exhale, waterfall down. Inhale, look forward and lengthen. Exhale, set the feet back, set up a plank. Take an inhale, exhale, lower down, chaturanga. Cobra or upward facing dog on the inhale and exhale, downward facing dog. Lift the right leg and step the right foot to the right thumb. Turn the left heel in. Inhale, reach the arms up for warrior one. So in warrior one, a lot of times you'll hear that your hips have to be square to the front of the room, which is pretty difficult to do. So the more I'm reading, the more master teachers are talking about just letting the hips just square to the top corner of your mat. So in our case right now, our hips will square to the left top corner of the mat. Then square your chest to the top of the mat. Arms up. Root the back or outer edge of your left foot down to the mat, internally rotating that back leg. One more inhale. Exhale, arms out to the T, and open up for warrior two. You want the right thigh at about a 90 degree angle. I'm sorry, parallel to the floor. It's the knees at a 90 degree angle. Gazing over the right fingertips. Think about lengthening equally in both sides of the rib cages, and the tailbone draws down. 
and the navel into the spine. Left arm down the left leg, rotate the right arm up and reach it over the right ear. As you reach over to the left, slide the left leg, hand down the leg and keep the bend in the right knee. We tend to come out of this one just naturally as we reach and stretch over to the left. Back in warrior two, right forearm to right thigh, rotate the left arm up and over the left ear. So you can look down at your left toe or right toes, you can look straight ahead or you can gaze up at your left hand. Whatever feels good for your neck right now. And then back into warrior two, straighten your right knee, setting that triangle, reach the right fingertips forward and then lower the hand down to either a prop, your shin or your ankle, reach the left arm up. And think about drawing your right femur into your right hip socket and drawing the tailbone towards your left heel. Lengthening through the under rib cage. So you're getting length in the right rib cage instead of just caving in on that right rib cage. And left hand to your left hip, look down at your right toes. Bend your right knee, place your right fingertips in front of your right toes. Slide the left leg forward, Grace more gracefully than that and lift your left leg up for half moon. When you get balanced, flex your left ankle and then reach the left arm up. So you're working to stack the shoulders and the hips here. You wanna get that left hip stacking directly on top of the right and same with the shoulders. One more inhale. Exhale, just bring the left hand down to the mat, square up your hips, and then bring the left foot down to the mat, next to your right. Inhale, look forward and lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, bend the knees, sweep the arms, Utkatasana chair pose. And then water, fall it down. Inhale, look forward and lengthen. Exhale, step the feet back in the lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, the cobra or upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Lift the left leg and step the left foot to your left thumb. Rotate the right foot in. Inhale, reach the arms up for warrior one. So again, your hips might be squaring to the top right corner of your mat, but the chest is squaring to the top of the mat. Arms out to the T and open up for warrior two. Think about your left thigh parallel to the mat. Tailbone draws down. And you're lengthening equally through both sides of your ribcage. Gaze over your left fingertips. Right hand down the right leg. Rotate left arm up and reach over to the right. Keep drawing that left knee forward. Back up into warrior two, left forearm, left thigh, right arm rotates and reaches up over the right ear. Back into warrior two, straighten the left leg, triangle, reach the left fingertips forward, drawing your femur into your hip socket, and then left hand down to a prop or your shin or the ankle, right arm reaches up. Lengthening through the bottom rib cage, stacking your shoulders and gazing up towards your right hand. Right hand to your right hip, bend your left knee, place your fingertips in front of your left toes, slide your left right foot forward, lift your right leg. And then when you're ready, reach the right arm up, flex your right ankle, and then stack. Stack your hips and your shoulders, opening up the side body, or opening up to the side. 
One more inhale. Keep the right leg up, lower the right fingertips, and then square the hips, and then lower the right foot next to the left. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, bend the knees. Sweep the arms for Utkatasana chair pose. Exhale, come to stand. So we're gonna go through a balancing sequence now. So we're gonna start in tree pose. So I'm just gonna turn and face you for this first pose. We're gonna stand on our right foot. Your left toes can be on the mat with the sole of the left foot on the ankle, or you can bring the sole of the left foot to your calf or up into your thigh. But trust me, if it's not on the ground, you're balancing. So don't worry about getting your, your foot so up high. Just get it off the ground. And then your hands can be anywhere that helps you for balance. Even if they're flying out here, that's what they're for. They can be on your hip, at heart center, whatever feels good for you, okay? Stare at one thing that's not moving. Steady the breath. Engage your core. One more inhale. And then bring your left thigh forward, right hand outside your left thigh, reach your left arm back and twist. Take your gaze to the side if it's appropriate, if balance is challenging, don't take your gaze anywhere. Okay. One more inhale. And then bring yourself back forward, step the left leg back into a lunge. Inhale, arms up. So put a bend in your left knee. So I have lower lumbar uh, back issues, They're all, it's always hurting me. So pull the tailbone down, bend the left knee, and draw the navel into the spine. That takes the big back bend out of your lower spine in this pose. If you're straightening the leg, you're just gonna get a much more of a back bend here. So it's up to you, but if the lower spine is an issue for you, just bend the left knee. One more inhale. And then exhale, we're gonna kick the left leg up and lower it down next to the right foot. So we're gonna do all that on the left foot now. So bring the weight into the left foot we got tree pose. So again, you can use your toes. If you're working on your balance, you can bring the um, sole of the foot to the ankle, the calf, or up into the thigh. Doesn't really matter as long as you're working on balance. And again, hands anywhere. Focus on something that's not moving. Make that connection with your breath. One more inhale. And then bring the knee forward. Left hand outside your right thigh. Right arm reaches back. And twist. Meet your challenges with a smile. And coming back to center, step the right foot back. Setting up your lunge, inhale, arms up. And kick it up. And then back to center. One more um, balancing pose. So we're gonna take the weight into our right foot. Left knee up. Reach the left leg back. Let the belly and the torso Come forward until it's parallel to the floor. Reach the arms out like wings. Flex your left ankle, setting up Dagasana airplane. So again, pick one thing that's not moving a couple feet in front of you. One more inhale. Exhale, fingertips to the mat. Keep the left leg lifted for standing split. So think of Barbie doll feet or legs here. So if you notice that left hip is lifting because you're really working on getting that leg high, bring it back down, square off the hips. 
and just work on lifting the leg with square hips. One more inhale. Exhale, look forward, lengthen, and step the left foot next to the right and fold. Inhale slowly, roll all the way up to standing. Bring all the weight into your left foot. Start to reach the right leg back. Belly and torso forward till it's parallel to the mat. Arms come out like wings. Flex your right ankle. One more inhale. Keep the right leg lifted, but lower the fingertips for standing split. And again, notice if the hips are um, opening up rather than keeping square. Think Barbie doll hips. And just lift the right leg as much as you can with square hips. One more inhale. And exhale. Inhale, look forward and lengthen and lower the right foot next to the left as you lengthen through the spine. Exhale, fold in. And we're going to come through to a seated. Whew. So, legs straight out in front. Palms on the mat next to your hips. You want to engage the legs, flex the ankles so much that the heels are lifted off of the mat. The thighs are engaged that the kneecaps are drawing into the thighs. Lengthen through the spine. So you create that forward tilt in the hips, getting the shoulders over your hips. And you're gonna stay here or you're gonna to start to fold forward. Think of any forward fold as your torso is the airplane that's landing and they land with the back wheels first. So think your back wheels are on your belly and your chest will be the last thing to land and it's continually moving forward. So if you're folding forward and you're starting to do this, come back up, get a straight spine, get that forward tilt in the hips, and then start to fold, reaching the chest forward, reaching the chest forward, reaching the chest forward, and then you can drop your head. But you wanna keep a straight spine. Bind with anything, your calves, your ankles, your feet, use a strap. A couple more breaths here. One more inhale. Exhale slowly. Come back up to seated. We're going to take the ankles wide. Nice and wide. So palms behind your hips. Press into the palms, lengthen through the spine, and again, create that forward tilt in the hips. So you're getting off the tailbone. Tailbone lifts up, pubis bone draws down. Okay, flex the ankles, engage the legs, same thing here. And then if you're going forward, think of the same thing like a, a plane that's landing. You can bring the hands forward, chest is going forward, 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 belly to the mat. Come down to the forearms, or maybe farther, wherever you feel like going today, but keep a straight spine. One more inhale. Exhale slowly, come back to seated. Gonna bring the soles of the feet together for Baddha Konasana. So soles of the feet together, heels in close to the groin. Again, palms on the mat behind your hips. Press into the palms, lengthen through the spine, get the shoulders over your hips, and that forward tilt, um, forward tilt working. So you can stay here if this is enough for you and you just wanna focus on breath and just let a natural, gentle stretch happen or you can start to bring your hands forward and start to fold. Chest is forward, 
Chest is reaching, reaching, reaching forward. One more inhale. And exhale slowly. Come back up. We're going to meet in tabletop to set up for pigeon pose. So once we're in tabletop, we're going to slide the right knee forward right outside your right wrist and then reach the left leg back. So you want to feel like you're square in your hips. If you feel like you're leaning over um, onto the right thigh, put a prop underneath your thigh, okay? And you can have your right heel right at the groin, or you can start to work your right shin forward towards parallel to the top of the mat. You can lower down to the forearms. Make yourself comfortable for five breaths. One more inhale. Exhale, walk the hands back. We're gonna roll to the outer edge of your right thigh and roll to seated. So now I'm just gonna turn to face you. You have your right heel in front of your groin, left leg is off to the side. Take your left hand, just place it on your left shin. Flex your left ankle. Right arm reaches up and start to bend and reach over to the left. Walking the hand down your left leg, binding with whatever you can bind with, and just reaching, getting a nice stretch along the right side. One more inhale. And exhale, come back up. Uh, we'll meet back in tabletop to set up pigeon on the other side. So once you're in pigeon or uh, tabletop, slide the left knee forward outside your left wrist and then right leg reaches back. Make sure your hips are square. If you're leaning over to one side, use a prop and then you can stay up on the palms. You can put the forearms. You can put a blanket underneath your belly. Wherever you're going, you've got five breaths. So get comfortable. One more inhale. Exhale, slowly walk the hands back. Roll to the outer edge of your left thigh and just roll around to seated. Left heel is at the groin, right leg is reaching off to the side. Right hand on your right shin, reach the left arm up and then reach over to the right. Flex your right ankle and just grab onto whatever you can with your right hand to bind something, whether it's your shin, your ankle or toes. One more inhale. And exhale, coming back up. We'll lay on our backs. We've got our final twist. And then just it up again. Okay, so knees are bent. Soles of the feet together. Take your knees over to the right. Unless you have a favorite, favorite twist, you can always just take your favorite twist. Take your gaze over to the left. One more inhale. And exhale, legs back to center. Make any adjustments that you need to before you take it to the other side. Legs to the left and gaze to the right.
One more inhale. One exhale, back to center. And then setting up Shavasana so we can end the class exactly the way we started it. Let the legs go straight, palms face up. Let your breath come back to your normal breathing pattern. Give yourself a couple minutes here, just relaxing, being thankful that you practiced, that you moved your body, you stretched, you twisted, and you got through any challenges that showed up. I invite you to stay here for several minutes. I would like to thank you for practicing with me. Peace. Namaste.